you typically will not see these three brands inside of a bicycle store. And there is a reason for that. These three brands have really set themselves apart from the whole bicycle industry in terms of what they can do for a retail brick and mortar store. So in today's video, we're going to talk about why that is, talk about why there's such powerhouses in the industry. And also we're going to go over my experience with these three brands, because back in the day, there was a time where we did carry all three of these brands all at the same time and talk about why we moved away from that. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. And if you guys do leave me a like, I guess. So first and foremost, why am I making this video? I get comments all the time, basically people saying you should sell giant, you should sell Trek. I do a lot of videos always showing off bikes and the people always say, can I buy this bike from you? I usually say no because of the fact that I do not sell it. I show off bikes just for you guys. I don't sell all these brands. I typically sell Specialized and Scott. Um, but back in the day, we did, as a retail store, used to sell all three of these brands at one time. We used to sell a lot of brands. Um, come and go. Our store has been around for 40 some years. My father's owned that store for a very long time. And uh, in the early 2000s, we had Giant, Specialized, and Trek all at the same time. And it really wasn't this kind of power hungry fight that it seems to be now where they want to be on top of one or the other who's better who's making the best product at that time they're really just about building their brand making a great bike and selling to whatever brick and mortar store that, they, that was out there this was the time of phone book ads this was the time of before the internet this was just getting into retail floor space and selling and fighting for space on there uh the reason why we did part ways with these two brands and really kept specialized was that this was right around the time that Trek was kind of being a little bit more pushy in terms of wanting to have more stock on the floor space. And this is where we thought that they were more going into goals of going into that more superstores. At this point, there was no such thing as a Trek store, but they were kind of pitching that concept of, we want to be more of your floor space, 80% of your floor space, 90% of your floor space. We want you to carry shoes, helmets, uh, tools, all lines of bikes, everything, and really get rid of these guys and these guys. And at the time, this was when Lance Armstrong was riding. He was very popular. He was making the Trek brand very, very popular as well. He was riding the U.S. Postal Service bike, and it looked really good. Um, but we were big fans of Specialized and the product they were putting out and what they were really doing in terms of relationships with retailers and the dealer themselves. So we went ahead and just kind of said, hey, it didn't work out, and we went ahead and got rid of Trek, and we stuck with Specialized and Giant. Now, at the time as well, Giant was still putting on pretty good bikes, or really good bikes, I'm sorry. Their TCR is very popular, their T-Mobile bike. Uh, Giant TCR T-Mobile bike. Uh, 2000s, no, 2004 I think it was. The black and pink one, we sold a ton of these bikes back in the day. Very popular bike. But again, Specialized was still on this verge of they did a really good job of implementing a whole brand. And again, this was when retail was really strong. Brick and mortar was really strong. And Specialized had a really good lineup of hybrids, kids bikes, clothing, shoes, helmets, you name it. They really did have the whole kit and caboodle. So we kind of just got rid of Giant at that time as well and really focused on Specialized. Um what what I recall was that there was really no reason why we got rid of Giant. It was just because of the fact that maybe we wanted to bring it more specialized. At that time, in this early 2000 period, uh, maybe 2000, 2004, somewhere around there, um, these big brands weren't really pushing the fact of, hey, we want to have so much floor space. We want you to do this much numbers. It was more, like I said, just trying to get into your store and get product on there and building their own brand. Jump forward to today. Uh, now that you have these brands, they are massive. Specialized Trek and Giant, when you think of a retail store, you think of a bike brand in general, these are the three big ones. These are the ones that carry everything. These are the ones that really do, if you ever go to open up a brick and mortar store, they are the brands that uh, are gonna want big orders, are gonna wanna dominate your floor space, and they do a really good job of just marketing bikes in general to the public, so that way when a consumer walks through your door, they kind of already have an idea of what kind of bike they want. And you're just a dealer there to kind of help them and guide them in that direction. For instance, Specialized carries a great lineup of shoes, helmets, clothing, lights, wheels, handlebars, everything. The whole fleet. You could buy a retail store and stock an entire store with that themselves. Whereas a brand like BMC or if a brand like Pinarello, let's say, 
yes, they have these nice high-end road bikes, these nice high-end mountain bikes, but they're missing the hybrids. They're missing the cruisers. They're missing the the tools. They're missing the the accessories. Like Specialized has their own brand of pumps. Bug. Bug. Specialized has their own brand of pumps, CO2 con- con- uh, canisters, um, lights, everything you need to stock shelves for a retail store, they have that. And it makes it more accessible and you get better margins when you go ahead and buy and pair that stuff with a specialized company. And that is, again, no f- no different between Trek and Giant. So whenever you do go with them, yes, you're going to need more commitment where maybe you put in a bigger order with these companies, but you will get so much more dealer support when going ahead and looking to stock something for your store. Now, there is a downside to this, like anything in retail. Uh, If you do decide to go with like a giant, like I said, they have literally bikes where you can literally stock. Look at, I mean, look at all these options. You have performance road bikes, time trials, fitness, city hybrids, hardtails, mountain bikes, electric, everything. You go to gear, they literally have shop tools, mini tools. You can get this line and outfit your whole store for it. So again, you don't have to go ahead and open up, like let's say you open up a, a small boutique and you get a BMC bikes, which are great bikes, but again, they just have bikes. So then you have to outsource tools, patch kits, shop tools, pumps, all this stuff like that for your store otherwhere. Whereas if you got giant, you literally have mini tools, CO2 inflators, literally brand name stuff that you'll probably get better margins with as well with stocking with them. But the downside is when you go to, this is just retail in general talking, when going to these bigger companies in present time, they're going to want a bigger commitment, just like anything. You want to go ahead and stock them. You want to partner with them. They're going to say, okay, cool. You want to carry our name. We do a lot with our name, and that's going to draw on a lot of customers to your store. We want X amount of dollars to go ahead and fulfill your store, which is way more than what a brand like a BMC a Pinarello would want, a Orbea would want. Um, and it's it's a it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You get great products with a specialized products. You get great products with like a Trek products. You get to stock your whole number or goal you have in mind. Like let's just say Trek came to us and said, hey, you want to be a dealer? It's going to be X amount of money to go ahead and start up with us. And you need to fulfill that benefit the trek is you can fulfill that with saddles helmets shoes clothing everything like that whereas bmc and Pinarello might say hey yeah you can do it with less amount of money with us but again you're limited to bikes high-end bikes and you can't really fulfill with like smaller and stuff like that so there is a downside to it that's why in today's pretty much industry standard you're going to go into a retail floor space like let's just say my store, for instance, we are considered a specialized store, even though we're not a specialized store. Our main brand is specialized. Probably about 80% of our floor space is specialized bikes in terms of hybrids, road bikes, mountain bikes. Uh, all of our shoes are specialized. All of our helmets majority are specialized. Um, we have pumps, lights, everything like that to go ahead and meet our goal for there. And the benefit of what specialized, like I said, is they will go ahead and offer dealer support in terms of Great warranty, a product marketing. I mean, we all know specialized marketing, marketing out there to go ahead and draw customers into our store. And then also usually with this dealer agreement, it'll kind of say, hey, you want to commit to us. We're going to kind of commit to you as well. And we're going to give you a dedicated mile radius in terms of where other people can open up a specialized store. So you're getting some kind of backing and saying, hey, if I'm going to commit to you, we're going to make sure that no one opens up a store. You guys are here. No one can open up anywhere around here but people can all be up here if they want to. Um, Whereas, whereas, like I said, these smaller kind of boutique brands, like even like a Bianchi, I have seen, and also I've even seen Factor now, these bike companies like this, Factor Bikes, my bad. Um, I've seen stores in Miami, which Miami is just this huge hotspot for bike selling places within like, two to three to five mile radiuses, all selling either like a Factor, a Cannondale, uh, a Bianchi. And they'll just have these in there because they're like more of like a ready to order kind of, or or made to order bikes on there. And basically they just want to push them to wherever they're going to get. Uh, which is okay. That's fine. If that's what you want to be. But definitely whenever you guys see this and let me know down in the comment section below, 
if you do walk into a store, it's usually met with one of these big brands. If it's a big retail floor space, followed by a bunch of other small brands or partner brands like a BMC, like Candle. And that's no disrespect to them. They're not small brands by any means, but in terms of what they stock. Uh, I know that there are still stores out there. I think there's a couple stores out there that usually, I think maybe Melo Johnny's in Texas, they might carry Specializing Trek. It's kind of like grandfathered in. I don't know if it's true or not. They might have done it. But like stores that are more Midwest or more isolated, maybe where there's not so many bike shops, yes, there might be a giant in Trek in there or there might be a Specializing Trek. Very, very uncommon, but stores that have been around for a long time, they still have in there. But now you have these big name guys that literally want to be specialized Trek and giant are literally the top three, I think in this in the industry. And they are basically there to say, Hey, if you have us, we don't want you to have them. If you have us, we don't want you to have them. If we have them, we don't want you to have them. And it's basically going back and forth in that matter, just because of the fact that they want to dominate that floor space. They want to say, this is our territory. We own this. We don't want to have any other competition there. And, um, you know, just let the prog go out. I will say out of these two brands as well right now, and this obviously is a personal opinion, but specialized footwear, I think is elite to the Trek footwear. In my opinion, you see a lot of pros in the Tour de France riding specialized footwear. You see a lot of retired pro cyclists ride specialized footwear and helmets. They do a great job at one marketing, but two developing a really nice product out there. So, but anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, and that's for all my viewers out there who always ask me this question. I get this question at least once a week. Why don't I sell these bike brands in there? It's not as easy as you think. You can't just buy and sell and stock whatever you want and just be like, hey, I'm a bike store. Let me go ahead and just sell you this giant Propel. It doesn't work like that. You need to be a dealer. You need to make an agreement. You need to buy a certain amount of product. You need to own a building to sell it. And that's just how it goes. I go out of my way and drive hours on end to go to these other stores to get these bikes in my hand to make videos for you guys. But uh, that's on my days off and free time because I like bikes. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm going on vacation tomorrow. We'll see if I do any videos. I'm looking forward to going camping. So it's 1 o'clock in the morning here. See you guys in the next one.